Continuing on from the last episode, the GT Riders venture on Route 1155, the beautiful road with lots of history from Thailand's communist infiltration era. Overnighting at Phu Chi Pha, then moving on to Pa Yao, a quaint town with a lovely ethnic temple culture. En route is the unique Phu San waterfall. Having left Chiang Kong, the riders blaze ahead on 11.55, aiming for Phu Chi Pha, a mountain high point bordering Thailand and Laos. Well, we're on the um, eastern side of Chiang Rai province here. Um, this road is running between two mountain ridges. This long mountain ridge is about 100 kilometers long, running northeast, southwest from um, Chiang Kong, Wiang Ken area. And then the other mountain range to the east of us is the border, that's the Puchi Fa uh, Doi Pamon range. But the beauty of the landscape along the road belies its bloody history. Memorials along the way illuminate details of the area's past. This whole area in the 70s was thick jungle and it's where the communists were uh, based and the government were uh, finding it very difficult to control this area because there were no roads. So this road was built to cut through between the two mountain ranges to be able to get some control of the, the whole area. Some of the other local people were employed by the military to build this road, which is about 90 something kilometers long. And uh, many people died building it. There was a lot of fierce battles along these hills and mountains. Over the course of three years, nearly 200 confrontations between the communist guerrillas and construction employees resulted in 156 workers' deaths. At another spot downhill, this memorial honours two army lieutenants who met a sad end fighting the communists. Today, of course, it's a peaceful area and it's one of the best roads in the north of Thailand to ride. Um, lots of twisties, ups and downs, great scenery on both sides. There's very little traffic. And so we, we have to remember the people that died building this road for us to enjoy today. It's something quite special in the country. Next, the riders head to a Hmong settlement to Long Tang village via the Big Dipper. The viewpoint looks over four districts. Pu Chi Fa is just 18 kilometres from here. The village was a site of a major battle between the communists and the KMT mercenaries. The caretaker living opposite the museum is happy to let visitors peruse the many interesting historical photographs inside. <laughs> and hang out with his family. The riders then head to Phu Chi Phar Mountain where they will spend the night. After breakfast, the summit of Phu Chi Phar by bike. Then on foot, the viewpoint is only 700 metres away. Puchi Far is located in the Doi Pa Mon mountain range. There is a big Hmong community here. During Thai school holidays, you may run into Hmong kids earning extra money. They may dance, offer tour guide services, and make sure you make it safely to the top. 
The summit at 1,628 metres overlooks the Sanyabuli province of Lao. The view is best at dawn on a clear day when the valley below fills with mist. November to February is the best time to visit. Never get tired of this Downhill at the car parking area, there are souvenirs to take home. So what do you think of this trip today up to Puchi Fa? Oh, fantastic. Uh, it's a nice, easy day ride out of uh, Chang Kong. Uh, where you by the Mekong, uh, you come up here into the mountains. There's a lot of history from the uh, 60s and 70s, the communists insurgency. So now you have beautiful roads, lovely scenery. Depending on your season, you may get uh, sunshine and clear skies or you may get cloud and rain like we did this afternoon. And yeah, last night was uh, my f first night to stay here and I'd definitely come back. Uh, I think it's fantastic. You know, no air conditioning needed, <laughs> 1,300 metres above sea level. And uh, your stunning view of the Mekong and into Lao. Uh, I, I definitely recommend coming here. And then it was off to the next destination. Paya Pipak was very much part of the 70s communist battle scene. It was once a bastion of communist fighters who harassed the men during the building of Route 1155 down below. The present king visited the area once in 1982 and left his footprint here. Another highlight of the park, a huge 24-year-old banyan tree. Heading downhill, Ban Huak Village is on the way. Another village where the residents have stories to tell from the communist era. This man has lost his leg to a landmine planted by the communists. He recalls an inspirational song promoted by the government. <laughs> the riders finally descend into the valley below, stopping to have a peek at the Ban Huak Thailand Lao border checkpoint. We've just come to check to see if this border crossing is open, if it's fully international. But it turns out that it's for locals only. Uh, and, and also on the 10th, the 20th and the 30th of every month they have a market inside town. And all the people from Laos come over and, and buy commodities and take back onto the, uh, to the Laos side. But this is as far as you can go. You just go from here, it's two kilometres on the Laos side, then you drop down onto the Mekong River on the other side. We're about three quarters of the way from Chang Kong to Chang Kham. Following route 1093 to the Chang Kham district, they take a refreshing break at the warm Pu Sang waterfall. The fall sits in the 285 square kilometre national park, which shares a border with Lao. The area is a habitat of the endangered giant tortoise. Geothermal activity raises the water temperature to a warm 35 degrees Celsius. There are only two warm waterfalls in Thailand. To get to the beginning of the stream requires an upward climb. The riders are now 25 kilometers from tonight's camping ground. Tomorrow they will set out to explore the temples of Chiang Kham. The first temple, Nan Taram. Wat Nan Taram is the finest Thai Yai Burmese temple in Pa Yao, built in 1926 by a Thai Yai expat working for a British logging company. This is one of the best uh, kept temple secrets in North Thailand. 
Wat Nantaram in Changkum. Uh, most people, most Westerners wouldn't know about it. Uh, there's very little publicity about it, and it's hidden in the back soil and outside on the main street. There are no signs for it. You have to know that it's here, and you come in down this little laneway, and then we've got this amazing teakwood temple that's uh, almost a hundred years old. It's a classic beauty, very traditional still. In the back, there is a museum where the abbots have collected artifacts donated by the locals. Next, San Muang Ma Temple. So this is a, is a Lu temple in, in Changkum, and it has beautiful murals on the wall that show the history of the Tai Lu people, how they started in China first in Sipsong Panar, and then they, they moved, eventually moved to Thailand. And the murals on the wall will show there have been floods, there have been battles with army and, uh, armies, and they've also been held captive and, and traded. And there were fights with the Thais and the Burmese. The, Burm, uh, the Burmese were pushed out, and then they bought, the area was depopulated, then they brought more Lu people in to settle the area again. But Changkum also has not only Lu people, it has uh, the Shan people. We've just seen the, the Shan temple there. Uh, there's lots of Hmong people in the mountains, we've seen them in the last couple of days, and there's also Yao people as well in the area. It's a very diverse uh, area with uh, different ethnic groups. And the final destination for this trip, Pra Chao Nang Din Temple, is named after its main feature, a Buddha statue sitting on the ground. All other Buddha statues in Thailand are elevated on top of pedestals. Legend has it that when Buddha visited the area, he wanted the statue placed on the ground. Later attempts to move it onto a pedestal were met with lightning strikes to the sermon hall. Fear that moving the statue is against Buddha's will has left it sitting here ever since. Next to the statue, visitors can check their luck. Within three days, the riders have completed the Chiang Kong, Phu Chi Fa, Chiang Kham route, approximately 120 kilometers all up, taking their time through twists and turns along the Mekong, navigated mountain ranges, stopped plenty of times for photo opportunities, and finally cruised down to the flatlands. Where will their adventures take them next? Stay tuned to Ride Thailand.